So we left off last time. We were still creating this um, this linkage peg. So let's look at the document again. Uh, we've got some measurements here that we're going to take a look at. And let's go back into our sketch. So we'll activate this component. Go back to our original sketch here. And let's see, this number is point, is it 0.325. Yeah, 0.325 should be the height of this. And then this dimension, uh, I think is correct. Yeah, point, uh, it should be 0 0.0625 divided by two. And then from here to here, let's see what that dimension is. It's 0.266 for that one. So let's do another dimension from here to here. Should be 0.266 divided by two. And then we want to put a three point arc on this. Over here, over here. And then we're going to dimension this to 0.1562. And there we go. So there's our linkage peg. We're going to revolve this around this axis. Going to be the linkage arm. So it's going to be this guy right here. So again, we're going to cut these as holes. Um, so we're going to do a circle, a circle, and then a couple of uh, parallel lines there. Uh, 0.1875 is going to be the radius of this circle. And the distance between centers is 3.5. So let's do that. So circle here. We have to do times two because this is a diameter, not a radius. I'm going to use my equal constraint to set these equal to each other. I'm going to use my horizontal constraint to make those two horizontal to each other. And then I'm going to do a dimension between these two. And that's going to be 3.5 inches. And then I'm going to draw a couple of a line using that L. Draw a line there. Draw a line here. And then I'm going to also uh, hit X to make a construction line between these two. And the reason why I'm going to do that, I'm going to use my symmetry tool to click on this, this, and then the midline. So it now makes those uh, symmetrical around there. So if I grab one and pull down on it, um, it should adjust um, the other. You can see that right there. Now let's create a dimension between the two. Let's see, a quarter of an inch. See right there, it's a quarter of an inch, and then it's going to be um, an eighth of an inch thick right there. So let's do our quarter of an inch. That's all of our lines are black, which is great. We're now going to do an extrusion. Another point one two five. We're going to use our hole tool. point and let's see let's do point one two eight I think is the dimension on that that point one two eight again so that's a through hole so we're just gonna go all the way and there we go and then let's do another one And there's our linkage arm. So we've uh, got a long 
you know, we've got a list of parts now going together, so it's great. Uh, let's move into the body. So new component, new sketch. Um, I'm just going to do it here, and I'm going to draw the front and then extrude back. So let's take a look at the body. I think I'm going to draw this profile right here, extrude it, and then draw this profile, extrude it, draw this, extrude cut, and then go back in and put all of my holes um, in their places. So that's kind of the process that I'm going to go through um, to create this part. There's a lot of ways to do it. You could, you know, do this profile, extrude, you know, draw this one and extrude cut. Um, again, it's six one way, half a dozen another. Um, depending on which way you want to do it. But I'm going to draw this out. So a couple dimensions I'm going to need. It's two inches wide, it looks like, and this section is 0.88 tall. And it's got a, a one and a half inch diameter circle. So you can see the radius there, but that's going to be a one and a half inch diameter circle that is 1.38 above the baseline there. It's kind of what I'm seeing. So start with our rectangle. We'll do a circle. Kind of something that looks like this. Um, again, dimension, this is two inches wide. And I believe this was 0.88 inches tall. And then this was inch and a half. And then we're going to center this um, in that space. And then we're going to go from here to here. I believe that was 1.38. And then to center it, um, I wonder if we can do the symmetry tool. So we could create a construction line, so we do L and then X, go from the midpoint here up to this, and then we can make that uh, vertical, and then that locks that in. That looks good. Um, how far back do we need to extrude this? So let's take a look. Total distance is 5.5. But we only want to stop an inch in seven, 1.75 inches from the end here. So if you look, there's that mark. So we're going to do 5.5 minus 1.75. And I'm actually just going to type in those numbers. 5.5 uh, minus 1.75. So, um, so it just does the calculation for me. So there's the front um, part of that train. I'm going to spin it around and do a new sketch on this back wall here. New sketch here. I'm just going to go ahead and draw a square and then I'm going to make this line over here coincident or collinear with that one. So use my collinear constraint. And then I need to put a point and dimension a point uh, for where this uh, arc is going to be. So there's going to be an arc there. Let's dimension that here. I think it's 0.5. Again, I'll, I'll relook at that. And then from here to the edge is going to be one inch because it's right in the middle. Let's check. So if we look right here, oh, 0 0.375 is my point. And you can see that's where my arc uh, radius is going to be from, is that, that point right there. So 0 0.375 is what this should be. Easy fix. Let's do a center point arc. Here's my center point. And it's going to go from this edge to this edge. I'm going to dimension that. And that's 2.35, what I saw. Now again, you can, you can see that this doesn't um, line up right there. So I need to make this right there. So that, that did it. So it actually, if I just grab and drag to the line, it made a coincident constraint um, on that edge right there. And that looks good. I'm going to finish that sketch extrude all of this and it's going to be back 1.75 great it's coming together I'm going to draw a new sketch on this wall and this one I'm going to do a center point circle somewhere in here and then I'm going to draw a couple of lines that are tangent um, that hit 
this wall there and hit that wall there. And now I just have to dimension all of that. And so let's take a look. So it looks like we have a radius of a half an inch. We've got a quarter of an inch um, from the center point of the circle to the edge. And it's 1.75 inches above the face. So we'll do that one first so from here to here. It'll be 1.75. Um, here to here is 0.25. And then this should be a one inch diameter. And then these lines should be straight. So let's just use the horizontal vertical constraint on those and that lines that all up. So again, everything turned black, we're fully dimensioned. We can now extrude cut these little segments here. And we're gonna go negative uh, two on that so it cuts all the way through. Good. Um, now we're ready for some holes. So we've got to put a couple holes here, a couple holes here, and then a hole in the back. So you can kind of pick and choose where you want to go. I'm going to do the holes in the front first. So I'm going to do a new sketch on the front. Use my point tool right here. And I'm going to put three points on this. Um, and I'm going to look and see what the dimensions of those are. So if we look here, this first one's 0.375, this one's 1.625, and it is an eighth of an inch off the surface there. So let's do that. So go from here to here, 0.375, from here to here is 1.625, and from here to here. I'm going to make these two horizontal to each other. I'm going to use my horizontal constraint to line those up. Uh, the dimension of this one to here, uh, I'm not sure what that is. Um, I'm just going to ballpark that. But I do know that this is right in the middle. So it's going to be a one inch, whatever it already is. Let's check that dimension height wise 0.625. So that's all done. So now I can use the hole tool, select the three holes, let's check what the uh, dimensions of those are. So it says that they are an eighth of an inch that are an eighth of an inch deep. Um, it doesn't say what kind of bottom they have to them, whether they're tapered or not. I'm just gonna make them a flat bottom. So we'll do a flat bottom, eighth of an inch deep, and it should be an eighth of an inch wide cut those holes. Let's do this side. Two points. Uh, we'll use our horizontal constraint to constrain those horizontally. Um, I think they're 3.5 inches apart uh, because my linkage peg is 3.5. So let's see. This one is an inch from the back and this one's four and a half inches from the back. So dimension here to here is 4.5 from here to here it's going to be one inch and from here to here I think it says to do a half an inch but then it tells me to do it um, 0.6 because of the um, the linkage arm going to hit the track if it's too low um, so we'll go with that I'm not sure if that's the case but we'll we'll go with the uh, the annotations on there um, so it says, I think right here, so this should be a 0.6 so the linkage bar doesn't hit the track. So when we put build the track and we set the, the um, train on the track, we'll, we'll definitely get an idea if, it, if it's high or not. If it's too high, we'll drop it back down, but this will be good. That is a quarter 20 through hole um, for that. So again, uh, everything's dimensioned there. I use my hole tool these. So now this is a tapped hole. So I can use the tapped hole. Um, it's going to go all the way through. And this is going to be a quarter 20. So if I go down here to quarter inch, there's my quarter 20. Um, 
the class basically just changes like how fine the threads are in terms of like how much slop and play there are. Um, if you kind of zoom in, you can see how that changes. Um, and with the model, really, you can tell how it changes. So if you go to like 1B, see there's um, less material. So that means there's going to be more slop there, which I'm okay with. Um, if you're actually going to 3D print this, um, you want to have modeled. You want to save like RAM so that um, it processes faster when you move things around. Then you want to uncheck that and it just makes a decal. So it's actually like an image that's wrapped around there versus um, actually cutting the threads. And really, if you're going to cut this and 3D print um, that and try to put a 3D printed like piece in there, you actually have to do a few other things to this um, because uh, 3D printers, especially um, FDM, 3D printers, they're not going to be that precise. So when you try to take um, a threaded rod and thread it um, and get it into there, it's not going to work very well. So usually what you do, if you're going to actually make this threaded, um, you would actually want to use um, a tap and die kit. So, so if you don't know what a tap and die set is, they look like this. Um, they come in many different sizes, um, but essentially it allows you um, to create threads in um, a material. So typically these are used on metals uh, for like aluminum or steel. Um, and it basically you have what are called taps and you have dies. So dies are going to be the, the round pieces here where you're going to create threads on an outer surface. So if you have like a piece of um, rod and then you're going to put threads on the outside of the rod, you'd use a die and you have uh, one of these uh, handles. The die goes in the handle and then you just turn it. Um, this is actually a tap right here. A tap is to put internal threads into a material. So you would um, you would take one of these pieces here that have a cutter and they have cutter blades on it and you rotate that into your part and then you have to do some reliefing so you you know you do like a half turn in and then a quarter turn back and a half turn in so it breaks the chips off um, so you don't break your your uh, tap same thing with your die so here it's putting a thread an external thread on a rod uh, with a die and then a tap uh, but if you watch a couple videos on that it's YouTube tap and die set um, but they're fantastic um, if you're you know taking metal stock and then you're gonna create um, threaded holes or um, a threaded rod uh, you do use a tap and die set to do that um, so I would encourage you if you're gonna do this in real life is just to 3d print this as a solid hole and then take a tap and actually tap the hole you want um, for that um, that would be my suggestion if you're going to 3D um, print something and then have it so it screws together. Um, so anyway, I'm going to go ahead and model that and just say OK. So it's going to cut that into there. We can see the, the coil cut that's created um, in there. And then the last one is going to be on the back. So again, create a sketch on this back wall, uh, create a point. And this one's in the middle. We've actually already done this point. This was the, um, the point for this arc right there. It was 0.375. Let me check that. Yep, 0.375. And again, it's one inch over. This is going to be a quarter inch hole, half inch deep. So let's just dimension to the side. Make sure it's one inch. Close your sketch. Do our hole tool. So this one's going to be different, not tapped. It's going to be a simple hole. Um, it's only going to be a half inch deep, and it's going to be a quarter inch hole. Uh, now, kind of going back to the tap and die kit, um, a couple things if you're using um, a tap and die kit. There are actually hole sizes that you should um, you have to look at. Um, so. So 
So if you're using a, a tap, uh, a quarter 20 tap, um, these are um, pretty handy. These um, tap drill sizes that you need. So you can actually go into here to this chart and you can look at a quarter um, inch. This is the, um, you know, the normal size in 10 thousandths of an inch. But if you're going to use a quarter 20, you can see right here, um, quarter 20, you're going to want to use something in this range for your drill bit size. Um, and a lot of times it'll tell you, um, you know, for pipe thread, which is different than, than these, but again, it, if you're going to drill a hole, you'd want to use a number seven drill bit um, to drill that hole. Um, the bigger the drill bit, the more, like the looser those threads are going to be. So, um, but anyway, that's, that's what, how you read this chart. You look at, you know, what size you want. So like an 832, for example, which is a pretty common size that we use in robotics. This is the size that you'd want to use. Now, do we have a number 29 drill bit? We don't, we don't have a machinist set of drill bits. Um, so if you go to like Harbor Freight, which we probably need to order one of these. So you can actually buy like a giant box of, um, of drill bits. Let me go to, uh, so like this right here. So this is probably next on our list. Um, I might buy this one because it's cheaper, but this one's probably a, a pretty nice uh, version. But if you look at this, you'll you'll notice that they actually have numbers on them with their sizes. So in this case, you'd want, what do we say, a number seven? So a number seven drill bit is what we'd use to create um, our hole. And then we would use the tap then that goes with that, uh, that quarter 20 tap. Um, here's a number 29, we'd use that to drill our holes in our material, then we'd use an 832 tap to create that. So um, it's good to know uh, those side things because again, when you, when you create more parts and pieces in engineering, um, you're going to need to know like these type of things with machining. Um, hopefully we'll be offering the computer integrated manufacturing course. Um, couple years so that uh, you can take that and um, but it's great so a kit like this I'm gonna check that other kit while I'm here uh, let's see what this number one is so yeah this this might be the way to go for what we do currently so it gives you a numbered um, from 1 to 60 uh, which is much cheaper than that but again you, you kind of get what you pay for on these but um, for our purposes for student use um, you know, this, this is probably overkill. Um, might go with this one here. It's 115 piece, it's only 60 piece. Um, probably a little higher in with the titanium uh, than, oh, it's the same stuff. Anyway, back to our project. So now we have all of our holes for our train. And there's one last little detail that, um, that some people might miss, but if you look, it says we're going to round all the edges a radius of 0.1, except for the drill holes. So we need to go in and put fillets on everything. Now, the nice thing about um, Inventor that I liked is you could actually, um, you could click on all fillets and it would do all of them and you could just uncheck, you know, the ones for the drill bit or for the holes. But here we don't have that option. Um, and I don't think you can do, I don't think we can click faces. Yeah, so it's not gonna let you do faces like that. So you have to go in and click on every line um, that you want um, to fill it. Now, I'm actually not gonna fill at the front um, of this because of the cow catcher, um, the way that it attaches. Actually, I'll stick with it and then we can always take it off if we need to. So if you kind of rub, you can actually see the hidden lines um, of your train as you go through and you're clicking all of these um, lines. So it'll, you know, like 
this one here. So again, if you're just kind of looking for these lines, I got them all. Um, again, you can take your uh, orbit tool and you can orbit around and make sure you got all of your lines. Looks pretty good. And we want that to be a tenth of an inch. There we go. Erase all of it. Looks good. You can see kind of these holes here. Um, these holes might be moving depending on our cow catcher. So we're going to put a cow catcher on the front or we might just remove this line from being. Um, filleted on that so anyway that looks pretty good you can also change your display style your visual style you can just do shaded kind of gets around all those hard edges and it looks you know more realistic um, in terms of the way it presents visually so that's what we did uh, oh we forgot our hole up top one more hole that we uh, that we missed so I'm gonna go back to I like the visible edges to show that we need to put a hole in the top for the stack um, right here. So it's 0.88 inches back from the front and it has, it's a half inch diameter that's quarter inch deep uh, right there. So um, this one I have to put a tangent work plane. So I'm going to use a tangent plane, click on this and it actually sets it to the top at zero degrees. You could, you know, if you needed to put the work plane somewhere else. You could, you know, go tangent around that entire circle there um, and do it. But there's zero degrees. Perfect. I'll create my sketch on the top of this. And so this is a little different now because I did my fillet already. Um, this front edge doesn't really exist on this work plane. Um, I'm going to create a point. Again, it's a hole, so I'm going to do that. I'm going to dimension from this front edge to here. I guess it let me pick it even though it's not really on that plane. You see, it, pro it did a projection of that. And then the same thing with the side here um, because of the fillet. But again, that's one inch uh, right there. I'm going to finish that. Use the hole tool. Again, half inch hole, quarter inch deep. Um, you could use the pointed end. I'm just going to do a flat surface for that. deep half inch hole there we go perfect so now we've got our train body I'm gonna go ahead and finish this video and then the next one is going to be doing some um, assembly we're going to joint things together um, using this tool here and then we're going to then start building some other pieces